I think that the city looks um, unique in comparison to anywhere else. I don't really like, I don't think about it as like economically depressed. I'm just used to it. I mean, when I go other places, I see that it's different, but I never knew, like, I never traveled outside of St. Louis until I went to California. So 15 years, the first 15 years of my life was all in St. Louis, all of it, never went anywhere. When I go other places, that's when I usually see like, oh, I don't think of it as St. Louis looks different than this. I think this looks different than St. Louis. Like everything is based around St. Louis for me, everything. I didn't really understand, I guess, what it really was. I would say I just kind of thought it was not really serious. I was only 15, so I didn't really have a full grasp on what it meant. Like I knew if they said it, it was true, but I just, he looked so healthy, I didn't really think it was like real, I guess, kind of. He had like a serious talk with me for the first time of like, if he passed away, it was nighttime and he was basically telling me, you know, look, I'm not ready to go. You're only 15. Like, I, I still have a lot to help you with, and like, it's just not my time. I know it's not my time. So, the first time I've ever seen a shooting star was right then that a shooting star came over. And then we both, he was like, make a wish, make a wish. And then we both made a wish. My wish was like, let him live as long as you can. And I know he made the same wish. He lived for like five years after that, when he was supposed to only live for six months. One of the things that I cannot ever, ever get over is that he can't meet his eye. Like, it like breaks my heart. It really does. We met in social studies when we were 14. We've been actually dating since eighth grade. We broke up for a year in between, but I used to tell my dad, with Mariah in front of me, we're gonna get married one day. My dad would be like, ha ha ha, okay, you guys are so cute, you think you're gonna get married. And we are married and have a baby, man. People are always like, think his eyes, my cousin or something, or like, my, I'm babysitting. I literally, I'm so happy that I have Mariah and the baby. Like, I like it exactly the way it is. I love it. I love Mariah and his eye. If I didn't have them, the, the stuff with my dad would be really hard. It was a routine checkup. Her blood pressure came back extremely high. They started doing all these intense ultrasounds. More nurses just kept coming in, coming in, coming in. They couldn't find his heartbeat, which was when they had to do the emergency C-section right away. The reason they had to take him out was not only that he, he could have passed away, she could have passed away. I didn't have anybody there at the hospital with me. I was by myself. I saw Mariah open on the table. Then they took me over to see him in the incubator, and he was tiny. He was born two pounds, seven ounces. Before I had even had a minute to just look at him, they asked me if I knew what was wrong with his thumbs. We were in the intensive care unit with Azai for 85 days. I was working two jobs, go to my first job at about 6.30 in the morning, and get off at two and go to my second job at three and then get off at about 10.30 at night. There's certain things that you just have to do. And one of the things that my dad always told me when he was sick, you just always have to take care of your family. My dad, instead of you know, leaving me with a little bit of money that he might've had left, he used the last of his money to move to California and spend his last time with me, which is more valuable than any, any material thing he could have left me. I mean, he taught me how to do everything. He taught me how to, how to be kind to people. He taught me how to be a good person. He taught me how to take care of my family, even though my family wasn't even there yet. How to always be positive, and he taught me to never stop pushing.